in the life is funded in part by the H. Van M. Meringen Foundation, additional support provided by the Ford Foundation, and by the Lily Ockenklaas Foundation, and by the David Bonnet Foundation, and these funders, and by the annual support of In the Life members like you. Welcome to In the Life. I'm Diana Nyad, and it's my privilege to host tonight's show, The Last Closet. Growing numbers of men and women are coming out to their families, friends, and colleagues, but the closets remain padlocked in one last arena, the world of sports. Most gay athletes feel pressure to keep their sexuality a secret, but as each athlete proudly comes out, doors open and others are inspired to follow. Like many boys across America, John Amici dreamed of one day becoming an NBA star. Despite his six foot 10 height, the odds were slim. At age 16, Amici was new to the game and living in England where soccer is king. But Amici's vision was unstoppable. He crossed the Atlantic and enrolled in a US high school where he so impressed college recruiters that he landed a coveted spot on an NCAA Division I team. After playing college ball for four years, Amici finally realized his elusive dream. He joined the NBA. Sport is religion in America. Our athletes are showered with money and expensive toys. But this athlete held a secret, and he struggled each day to keep it from his teammates, his coaches. He was gay. And he feared that if this fact became public, it would wreck the career he had worked so hard to build. There were no role models. No male pro athlete on a major sports team has ever come out while still playing. So for six long years, Amici led a lonely life off the court. Four years ago, Amici retired from the game. In February 2007, he revealed his secret and became the first NBA player to come out as a gay man. Tonight, John Amici shares his story and eases the door open for other gay athletes to walk through. Sports is this masculine distillation. It is the elixir of machismo. Athletes are supposed to be hyper-masculine, strong, physically imposing. They're also supposed to be aggressive. Sexually attractive to any woman. You know, this irresistible. Invincible. This is this is what an athlete is supposed to be, heroic, godlike. There is no intersection between the ideal image of an athlete and what people imagine the stereotype of a gay man. There was an instance where I we were on a bus with a team of, uh, that I was with, and there was a sign that said, "Someone you know is gay," and you know, as is normal on a professional. Uh, sports team, bus, everybody's got their headphones on. I had mine on. But I saw this and I instantly knew that it was going to get interesting. So I kind of unplugged my earbuds and I, and I listened. And the conversation then immediately goes to everybody focuses on it because it's the word gay and everybody in a sports locker room sees that word. It's like red rag to a bull, I think. Um, and it, and then, the, then the comments flow and they flow without thought. It's just, you know, oh, that's disgusting. Um, you know, if my son was gay, I'd kick him out of the house. I didn't tell people anything. I didn't talk about women. People never saw me having a personal life at all. Um, it would be rare to see me at a restaurant eating alone uh, or otherwise. I basically stayed in my house. I sequestered myself. 
There were lots of times that I would drive by gay bars and just look. You know, you'd see, you know, you can see the lights flashing from the inside. You can sometimes even feel the music as you drive by. Um, you know, see the people at the door and the queue of people in the outside waiting to go in. And you just think, uh, you know, it's like tantalizingly close. Life you, life you can't have right now. And here I am. And I'm not just there and on the periphery. I was a central part of a team. You fear losing that. You want to hold on to it. And you will put your personal life in a box and shove it under the bed if that's what it takes to keep this. And um, I think sometimes it's difficult for GLBT people to, outside of that type of environment, to understand you know, how you could kind of compromise yourself. But you work so hard to do this thing that a minuscule percentage of the population can even dream of achieving. And you don't want it to, you don't want it to go away for something that you didn't do wrong. Coming out in this way so publicly, I need to have an impact on the lives of real people. For young people in sports, absolutely. I hope that they can look at this and see that there is possibilities for them. It's that thing again, you can see possibilities. However distant they may feel right now, there's possibilities for them that, are, that their life can be better than it is right now. Um, I want to be part of an active change for straight people and gay people so that people understand that right now at this time in history, we have never before so needed the harmonious voices of, of a real diverse community. We need that now. You are about to meet two unique athletes, Anne-Marie Saccarado and Angel Bovi, female competitors in one of the most aggressive and male-identified sports on the planet, boxing. These two women have made a different choice than many elite athletes at the peak of their competitive careers. They are out and proud, pioneers in the ring. You know, I've been a boxing fan all my life. It's a pure, simple, compelling moment when two equals step into the ring and face each other with nothing more than their lightning-quick feet and artful punches. When it's a fair and even bout, those of us outside the ring witness a dance of beauty, and in the end, we clearly see who has shown the most heart. Anne-Marie Saccarado is on a focused mission to reach her absolute peak of physical and mental endurance. In one month's time, she will face a monumental test. She will come to know if she has what it takes to be a world champion. Well, I got money in the bank. And I got a car to drive. And I got a working set of hands that my guitar seems to like. Cause I got a love that won't quit. And I got time to rest. And I got a clear, able mind that sees my life going fine. Yeah, cause everything I need is right. I was never good at ball sports. I just happened to be good at boxing. I, I wish I was good like a swimmer or a golfer or something, but boxing just, just seems to be what I'm good at, <laughs> which is unfortunate. <laughs> Where I was and everybody begs me to go back to basketball and volleyball, but this has taken my heart, it's taken my passion, something about it that uh, I have in this ring that I haven't had on the basketball court 
or the volleyball court. Boxing is the ultimate test. Boxing is the ultimate test of what do you have inside of you? Not just your physical strength. What's your heart like? How bad do you want this? How much are you willing to give? How much are you willing to sacrifice? How much are you willing to bring into that ring? Yeah. You gotta dig deep within you for what you want to get that win, to get that victory. Just like in life. No. You jump to that. Hey. No, you jump to that. Uh, bam, beautiful. That's great. Good, good. Beautiful. Right there. Right. Right. That's why you're falling. I like my fight, I can back, I can fight back. So right now she's getting ready because she's very tough. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Bend down a little bit. Chin down. Chin. Yeah. yeah. That left hand, the, the, the wrist had to turn more. Position yourself, you're off balance. OK, body. Bing, pop. Bing, pop. Four, baby. You see sometimes grunting in the ring. This is, comes from the soul, from the inside. Some people are born genetically different than others. She got a gladiator genes. That's the difference. Some people are born to be gladiators. Some people are born to be artists. So that's what makes a fighter, that gladiator spirit in him. And she got it. She definitely got it. Good. That's it. She's doing beautiful. She's going to be our champion. After two years on the amateur boxing circuit, Anne-Marie turned pro and racked up an impressive 11-1 record, becoming one of the top-ranked females in the country. But a shot at a world title eluded her, until a fight in Edmonton, Canada fell into her lap, leaving just weeks to prepare for the most demanding challenge of her career. It's great. I love this game, I love this sport. I love training, I love pushing myself to, to the extreme, to just keep going and going, you know? That's why I love these guys. It's the first time I started working with Sharif and the first time that I met him, and that's incredible. That's what I want. I want a team behind me that's gonna keep pushing me past where even I think I can go. At age 18, I was involved in a very serious car accident. I was in the back seat and uh, the car hydroplanes and I was sleeping and we spun off the road. We hit a pole and on impact, they found me um, halfway outside the back window of the car. The doctor said she might not live the night. By all accounts, Anne-Marie shouldn't be alive today. <laughs> I woke up and the first words out of my mouth, mind you, I have a priest in front of me. I have my family around me. I'm in a hospital bed, all kinds of injuries. First words out of my mouth, what about sports? And the doctors told me they didn't think that I would walk again or walk normal again, but I knew that I'd be okay. I had two broken legs. I had nerve damage. I had no feeling in my left leg whatsoever from my hip down. I broke my right hip bone. I broke basically every rib on my right side, punctured my right lung. I shattered my right arm in five places. I have a metal plate holding this together. I have a metal rod in my right leg and a metal rod in my left leg and I tore apart my chin in several directions. I had one free arm that wasn't injured, and with this arm, I had them tie resistance bands to every corner of my bed and just doing whatever movement I could and just kept pushing myself, pushing myself, pushing myself. And I think that has given her courage as far as her boxing is concerned. Why be afraid of an opponent in a ring when, you know, look what she's faced? Why be afraid of, you know, being gay bashed because look what she's faced? I mean, it's all small peanuts now when you've faced death and come that close. After her accident, Anne-Marie searched for a workout program to rebuild her shattered body. One day, she stepped into a boxing gym and discovered her passion. 
Her early success in the ring came from raw willpower and the love of competition, rather than finely tuned boxing skills. Uncoached and self-taught, she was a sloppy and wild fighter. When I first started boxing, I was a big brawler. I was a Tasmanian devil in the ring, just trying to survive, come out with the win. Brawling is just craziness, arms flailing in the ring and just running after your opponent and making no sense of your punches and ugly. It's, it's just ugly, it's just standing there and slugging. Anne Marie knew that brawling was not going to take her where she dreamed of going. To compete against the best boxers in the world, she would have to train not only harder, but also smarter. She designed an innovative training program that worked every muscle set used in the ring and pushed herself to a world-class level of endurance. Anne-Marie then found a coaching team that showed her how to box rather than just flail her arms. Low, you carry your hands a little low. Pick them up. Boxing is science, very technical. Everything is measured. Every step is measured. Every punch is measured. The correct form, and the, bar, the power is delivered behind the correct form. That's beautiful. The jab in boxing is what starts everything off. The jab sets up your combinations. My jab I'm gonna use to gain respect in that first round. I'm pop it out nice and strong, but nice and relaxed. I'm gonna use it to keep my opponent away from me, whatever distance I want them at. I'm gonna use it to break their rhythm if they try to get into a rhythm to throw an attack on me. I'm gonna use it to get in their head, just frustrate them. Right, right, that's, the, right. that's it, right, right. Hi, right. hi, right. good, beautiful. That's it, step over. Hi, beautiful, move your body, don't walk like that. Right, right, get close, don't go back. Get close, side to side that body, that's it. Move your body, right, move, move fast, move body. That's not move body, that's skipping punches. Move your body, stop that Move your body. Move your body. You're not moving your body. Fast. Step. 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 Boxing seems like it'd be a very simple sport, but what happens then at 20 feet by 20 feet in the ring can take such a long time to learn. Turn that back foot. Your hand has to be out of you. Step. It's not about two people standing in front of each other and slugging it out. It's about evading and returning and the offense and the defense, and it has to flow seamlessly together. So footwork and moving in the ring is really the key to our success. Just being shy of somebody's punching zone. If, you, if, you can, if they throw a punch and they end here because you took a half a step back, and then you come right back in, and you know, they don't, they, they sit there scratching their head wondering why they didn't hit you. Hey, you know how to do so much, only walk, only walk, look, walk. You're doing all this, you're doing all this. Walk. Or oh, you walk in the street, like this. I'm not doing that. that you, you're doing that, you wanna move, you wanna move from here, you sit back and then you're moving. Huh? Look, look, what I said about your foot. Stay in your foot. When Hector works me in practice, he is a perfectionist, and he wants nothing but the best for his fighters. So everything has to be precise. He yells a lot, he screams a lot, but the technical aspect that he has has really added a lot to our games. So you kind of take one for the other. Hey, step. Again, wait. Step, wait. Relax. <laughs> Get your position. Who else is fighting this from New York? Melissa Hernandez? I have to check the card. All I know is Melissa. Women's boxing is a poor now. stepchild to the male the side of the sport. Like most female boxers, Anne Marie and Angel do not receive big fight purses nor endorsement contracts. Yeah, other fighters. On top of training, this boxing couple must act as their own managers, promoters, and publicists. Melissa, 
in this sport, you have to be scrappy. <laughs> you have to have determination as a woman boxer or you'll never make it. You know, I'm not just talking about inside the ring, but outside of the ring. If you don't have that never say die attitude, you're just not gonna get anywhere because this is a frustrating sport. It's not just her fight, it's my fight too. And when I'm fighting, it's not just my fight, it's her fight. We couldn't do it without each other. I mean, nobody would take care of that other part, you know, if we weren't there for each other. We're connected at the hip all the time. If we can get a good fight photo, probably, but I want to have a backup. Nah. I like this one, because it looks like you look now, you know? Most female boxers have a day job to pay the rent, which often means training at the end of a long work day. OK, sorry. An arm straight out in front okay. of you. Anne Marie has found a more flexible solution as a personal trainer, where she inspires her clients to relate to their bodies in new ways. That's it. Two. Good. And I've tried to give them what's inside of me. Show them courage, show them strength, show them that they're capable of doing things. Excellent. Much better. I'll try to breathe, but... <laughs> it's not what they do here, it's what they do outside of here and how they perform. And if I can make them stronger inside, then my job is complete. Deep breath in. Exhale. You breathing? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Oh, God. Exhale, relax. You see how I'm tensing my shoulders? You're tensing like... everything. Yeah. So if you tighten up, what's going to oh, happen? I can't help it. It's at a yeah, point that it hurts. hurts, really. It hurts your stretches, two different things. Two different things. I'm barely moving you. Okay, watch your right. cross. Deep breath in. Exhale. Relax. Much better. Good. Oh my God. Sir? Yay. <laughs> I haven't had my leg over like that since we started. I won't break you. Don't relax. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, six. That's it. Two, six, three. Angel teaches boxing as exercise when she's not fighting. As an amateur, Angel has won every title possible, including the U.S. Nationals two years in a row, the New York and National Golden Gloves, and in 2002, she led Team USA at the World Championships in Turkey. She dreams of Olympic gold. But boxing for women is not included on the Olympic calendar. As a board member of USA Boxing, Angel lobbies for the day women will compete on the Olympic stage. Angel's amazing. It's very special to be in a relationship where the two of you are striving for these goals and up against these challenges and to be able to push each other and help each other get there. That's it again. Shh, shh. Good. Two, two three, two. What's it really like to be a boxing couple? <laughs> Oh, boy. It sucks sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks bad. It sucks because there'll be times where I don't have a fight. She has a fight, so she's training, she's watching what she's eating, you know, and then the tables turn and I'm fighting and, you know, she's able to do whatever. You know, we miss out on vacations. We miss out on enjoying a lot of life because it's, you know, it's, it's constantly taking a toll on, on our time and, you know, the amount of time we put into training and, what you have to eat and how much time you have to actually spend with each other, quality time you have to spend with each other. So it takes a toll, but... Um, it, it keeps us poor, which, you know, is no fun. keeps us very poor. And a lot of times, Amory can't go to my fights because she's training for a fight that probably won't happen, but she's training anyway. So we spend a lot of time apart. And then I just think back and I think that, you know, if it wasn't for boxing, we might not have met. So yeah, that's it's pretty true. good sometimes. <laughs> I the boob, I didn't know that was coming. Sometimes I feel like
that song my lover I wrote because <laughs> it just it so perfectly symbolizes my relationship with Anne Marie. Anne Marie is my missing piece. She's passionate, she's fierce, she's loving. Um, we talk without speaking. She just completes me. When I first met Angel, I knew she was something special. I met her in Midland, Texas at the U.S. Nationals boxing. Two years later, we met up again in Gleason's gym in Brooklyn. And the electricity in the air when we both saw each other, there were sparks everywhere. It was, we were both bouncing off walls. And, um, you know, we hooked up the next day to spar. No, we really did. She called me. We sparred the next day. Um, that was on Friday. And then uh, she left my apartment on Monday. And she kept coming back. And, uh, I mean, really, it was, it, it's been magical. Sometimes we'll get the sarcastic remark here and there for being affectionate in public or whatnot, but you know what? This is bringing being a gay athlete and being out, being open to the table. That's part of our goal. That's part of what we're trying to accomplish. Out lesbians tend to be on the cutting edge of things. So in boxing, in the last bastion of the male world, you're seeing females start to creep in. So just being an out lesbian, we were the first ones to kind of push that door down um, just because we're, we're used to not having to, you know, fulfill society's norms on what it's like to be a woman, not having to look a certain way, not having to behave a certain way, and being afraid, you know, if we don't behave that way, of the repercussions. I mean, we're used to shaking it up in society. So this is just, you know, our way of doing it. Anne-Marie and Angel face serious obstacles as women entering the sport of boxing striving for the same opportunities and recognition as the men. But the fact that they were lesbians in an open and loving relationship was surprisingly not an issue. Boxing traditionally is a very accepting place. I mean, it was the first place, you know, African Americans and, uh, you know, Caucasian people could be together. Historically, men, you know, they would fight, they would train, they would have the same training facilities, they shared the same ring when out in society, that was not the case. So for us, other boxers are probably our biggest allies. And I walk into Gleason's and you get just so much love from the guys that are there. Everybody wants to hug you, kiss you, support you. They joke around with you. They joke around with both of us about our relationship and say funny little things to the both of us to try to get us going or whatever. But it's great. It's more like a family atmosphere. <laughs> Boxing gym is a very different space. You gain your respect by years put in. It's not an issue of if you're gay, straight, black, white, whatever. Stand up. You're going in those ropes and you're sweating and bleeding just the same as everybody else, and that's where the respect comes in. Back. Back. Push back. There's many people that walk into that boxing gym that you know don't last a week or don't last a month, and it's the ones that last. It's the true warriors that stay. And I respect every single person that steps through those ropes because it's hard as hell. Boxing's the hardest thing I've ever done. Beautiful. It's not an easy sport. You don't play boxing. Ah, that's awesome. Looking good. You're looking good. Thank you. They respect mm. us because we can box. You get much more respect because you can box than anything else in the gym. Being out and at the top of their game has earned these boxers a growing fan base, both gay and straight. Before they knew it, they were role models. Just because we were out, people would gravitate towards us who were closeted. People that are wrestling with coming out or even wrestling with are they gay or are they not gay. And I can't tell you how many people started training with us, we thought because they wanted to train with us, but it turns out they were on the verge of coming out themselves. So once you see the impact you have on somebody, or somebody even writes to you and, and is telling you this, this issue that they're dealing with or struggling with, and to be able to help them, I mean, just the simple fact that they actually came to you, it's, it means a lot to us. And we're always like, we sit back afterwards and we're just like, wow, look at what we're doing. And it always comes at the right time. We're having a crappy day. Just the other day, we're having a horrendous day. Why are we boxing? Why are we, you know, we're wasting our life and the whole, you know, well, how are we going to retire? We have no money, blah, blah, blah. 
So we get on MySpace, and here this random person we don't know writes us and says that she read about us in Curve, her girlfriends, and mm -hmm. that, you know, we really inspired her to start boxing and, you know, to, and to, to come out. I never fought for a second with who I was or what I was about. Um, I never fought with being gay. I said, wow, this, this can't be. No, maybe it's just this one, one girl in particular. To me, it just... Who you love is, is who you love, and I wish I could bring that to, to the world. I wish the world could see that, because why is that wrong? I see so many people in this world that live with fear, fear of all kinds of different things, and I'm not choosing to be one of those people. I, I can't live in fear. I mean, I, you know, I used to be afraid of different things, and I feel like it's, it's no way to live your life. You have to take risks. You have to be on the cutting edge. You have to, you have to be free. The best preparation for a title fight is sparring, and the optimal sparring is against elite boxers. IWBF champ Missy the Fury Fiorentino arrives to go eight rounds against Anne Marie, protected by padded headgear to prevent injury or knockout. Yeah, come on. Yo, yo, yo. Beautiful. That's it, baby. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. 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 Hey My jab needs to come out a little more. You're like pushing it. your punches a little bit there. Yeah, I was trying to get my range but this is so much shorter. Don't make me move. Touch it right away. Bye. Yeah. Shorty right punches. Right Keep work. Come on, work. Right work. Right there you go. Right hand again. Take right oh, oh. the hand from back there. Keep punching. Don't stop. Keep punching. Keep punching. Stay back, stay back. Stay back. Right there. Oh, ah, oh. That's where I her. Oh, you could have knocked I, her out right there. I, she was. She that was, was like six like, shots I unanswered. I saw her eyes go back I had, and I backed off. Yeah, but that was six unanswered shots. I know, that's why I backed off after her. She was hurt. I saw her eyes go back when I landed that right, and I said, because I didn't mean mm. to throw her. I mean, you know, it was just perfectly that was a good placed. One. That was so. perfect. That's it. Boom. Boom. Good. Good job. Good job. What you do here, that's the same thing you want to do in the fight. You want to hurt that girl, and then you want to start looking at her, playing. A lot of times I try too hard. Uh, Hector's giving me advice in the corner, and I want to perform the right thing, but I try too hard, and that screws my game up. When I learn to just relax and feel my flow and let it go, I come out a lot better. My shots are more precise, and they're more effective. So if I can just keep my cool on the fourth and just stay relaxed, keep my composure, and just let it flow, it's going to be a good night for me. Very good, very good. Trying too hard to win has been Anne Marie's Achilles heel ever since her days as a brawler. This will be Anne Marie's first 10 round bout against an opponent who already holds three world titles. She realizes if impatience overtakes her boxing technique, it could cost her the fight in Canada. Good, very good. You were just a great fighter. You, this is your chance. Come back with the win, that's it. You know? no. <laughs> Edmonton, you're alone tonight. Looking for your exit plan. Wasted mornings with the wrong old man. Reach out and take a hand. Time to look inside. And we welcome well, Anne Marie Sacrado to Edmonton, the City of Champions. She's a tremendous fighter with a tremendous record. She's tough. God, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go right now. Um, when we got the call about uh, Eliza being injured and uh, the WBC had asked if we were interested, I said, hell yeah, um, game on, as soon as uh, my manager Luigi told me about it. So 
It's been a belt that I've wanted for a while. I've been wanting to be a part of Rock and Suck and um, or bring it their own for quite some time. So I'm amped and I just, I couldn't be more excited. Now the WBC world champion, Edmonton's own Jelena Jelovic. Yeah. Thank you everybody for coming. You know, this fight means a lot to me. I'm moving up in weight to fight for the WBC lightweight belt. And it's an honor to fight for the WBC as I already have the super featherweight belt. This is the greatest assemblage of women boxers ever on one card. It is called the Border War as three American girls will take on three Canadian girls for world heavyweight, oh, actually not a world heavyweight, okay? World title. World title. Three, two. It is called the Border War as three American girls will take on three Canadian girls for world titles. And Jelena Mergenovich of Edmonton will be uh, taking on her opponent for the WBC lightweight title. Yep. Your opponent's name is and from where? Uh, it's Anne-Marie Saccarato from New York. <laughs> what all of us have, it's a killer instinct or else we wouldn't be in boxing. Um, you know, we all, it's not that we want to hurt our opponent, it's just that's what we've been trained to do. And, and um, you know, after the fights, you see everybody after the fights, they give each other a hug and, and it's, all, it's all that. It's between the rounds and between the bells that, that we're out to kill, but after that, it's, it's not. It's, you know, camaraderie, we're, we're friends. Jelena is going to win because Jelena, pound for pound, is the biggest puncher in female boxing. Uh, I think she's got more experience than Anna Marie. And I just think she punches too hard. I'll give it, uh, won't go past six. I've had 11 knockouts to my record. In, tw in, in 18, 19 fights, I've had 11 knockouts. There's a lot of disadvantages coming in for this for Sakurado. Sakurado, every time she seems to have stepped up in level of competition, Belinda Lara Puente, Eliza Olsen, she doesn't win. She's coming into the backyard of Jelena Majenovic. Majenovic is like the governor of Edmonton. So uh, Majenovic has been in arguably with a better level of competition. She's a heavier hitter. Sakurado, though, looks in fantastic shape. She's a little bigger than, than Jelena. So I see, you know, on paper, this is going to be, a, it's a pick em fight. It's not a fight that I would want to bet. She hasn't faced me yet. Enough said. She hasn't seen me. She hasn't seen the likes of me. She doesn't see what I have to bring to the table. She doesn't know what's in here. She hasn't seen anything yet. We'll see Saturday night. I felt better immediately, so whoever those people were, I'm feeling crazy energy inside of me um, and see my body wants to go I'm rested that day it's my day my body relaxes a little bit so that energy all built up and you just feel as muscles they want to move just try to relax and mentally stay focused on what task is at hand thinking mentally about what I'm going to do in that ring the next day. I'm seeing it. I'm envisioning it. I envision all 10 rounds.
one and All right, we're going to start with the official weigh-in portion tonight. Starting with Jelena Mergenovic, 133 even. 133, Mergenovic. Ann Saccarato, Anne-Marie Saccarato. Just up on there and stand still for me. 135. 135, Saccarato. It's easy to set it off. And this is one to lick it. Call on Jesus. He'll help you. Today is my day. Today is my day. I want to be a champ. I want to be a champ. Live big in my heart. Live big in my heart. And help me to succeed. And help me to succeed. From this day on. From this day on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ah, we're ready to go now. Let's go. <laughs> when we first got here on Thursday, Anne Marie was very stressed. But that's normal. That's a normal thing. You get stressed, you get cranky. If you're not eating the way you want to be able to eat, and everything was a little stressful. But now that the weigh-ins are over, Anne Marie usually loads up on her carbs in the morning, eats freely. Anything she wants to eat, she can have. You know, it helps you mentally as well as you want to put on some pounds back before the fight and be well fueled. Now it's game time. Now she's, it's a happy stress. Go make bacon. Made in bacon, that would be. Wow. You got a school bus, gotta go take some people to school. Let's go. You the teacher coming to take somebody to school. La televisión, la televisión. Pero está solo eso. Stay nice and relaxed. Slip any shot coming. Block it. Counter. Block to the body. Counter. Be nice and slick. Frustrate the hell out of them. They can't catch what they can't see. When you're getting your hands wrapped before a fight, that's when you really feel it's on. And there's just so many emotions going inside of you. Your intensity goes up 10 notches, your focus goes up 10 notches, and okay, this is the final countdown. This is it, this is the moment. It's you, it's your coach, it's that bond. It's like taking all those hours of training, all the sweat, all the sacrifice, all the knowledge that you've learned and gained, and uh, wrap it up. Put it right here nice and tight. 
feels great. It feels incredible, feel unstoppable. I feel like I have these two weapons of mass destruction, these two bricks that um, I can use any way I want. I can paint a picture with them. I can do some serious damage with them. I can end the fight with them. I can play with them. I can have fun with them. Do whatever I want. Uh -huh. Beautiful to watch, Hector. Thank you, son. It's the best. Oh, it's intense. It's intense. It's just amazing. A pressure cooker, you could call it, hey? Because um, the people all down there dressed in their nice high heels or their fine suits, they'll be yelling and getting right into it. Well, the crowd's going to be going crazy for Jelena. She is, like I said, this is Jelenaville, the city of Edmonton. And when, when she comes on that ring, the fans will be going crazy. And that influences judges. I don't care where you are. When Jelena throws a punch, and maybe it didn't quite hit, the fans go nuts and the judge say, <laughs> and that's how boxing works. Four, three, two. The scene is the Shaw Event Center in Edmonton, Canada, the mecca of women's boxing, where tonight six women will buy for three world titles as they prepare to enter a ring of their own. Let's get right to our main event. What does Saccarado bring special to the table, though, that Majenovic has never seen before? Probably how hungry she is. She took this fight on only one month's notice, and she's fighting at a career low of 135 pounds. Why is she doing that? Because she's hungry, she wants to win, and she is here to win. When a boxer steps in the ring, it's different than almost any other sport. First of all, obviously, there's no team sport. There's nobody behind you, there's nobody in front of you. All you know is there's somebody on the other corner that wants to kill you. It's kill or be killed. And there's nothing else like that in the sporting world. This is something that's, you know, if, on, on its barest levels, is a throwback to Roman gladiators. Something happens when I walk into that ring. That bell rings, and I feel, I feel huge. I feel like a giant in the ring, unstoppable. When I'm fighting, I feel 10 times bigger and stronger than what I actually am. Anne-Marie Saccarato from New York, making her way into the ring here tonight. Coming in with an 11-1 record, two draws. Her only loss coming to Belinda Laraquente in a split decision. All right, the ring walk beginning right now. Jelena Majinovic, 11 knockouts, one of the highest knockout percentages of any female fighter active today. She's got a very formidable opponent right in front of her tonight. And Anne-Marie Saccarato, somebody who knows how to spit in the eye of adversity. Entire arena up on their feet here as Jelena Majinovic makes her way into the ring. Saccarato looking like a bull in the china shop in the other corner right now. Looking to get out there and very calm is Majinovic. Both fighters fighting in orthodox style. Sakurado up on her feet. Stick and jab. Majenovic starts fast, as she always does. Comes out with a three-punch combination. Certainly caught Sakurado's attention there. Good combination by Sakurado. Sakurado with the right-hand lead, followed by a left. Right now, Majenovic uncharacteristically slow here in the first round. Keep in mind, Sakurado's never been the 10-round distance. Been eight rounds only once. Oh, Majinovic with a back to Sakurato, holding on to one hand, and turns her back on Sakurato. Sakurato showing that that New York swagger is not just New York swagger here. Of course, she's trained by Hector Roca, famed trainer of Arturo Gatti. Got Hillary Frank ready for Million Dollar Baby. Oh, big left hook by Majinovic. Sakurato fighting it off, but her, her legs were a little wobbly after that left hook.
tenth and final round. A lot of rounds very close. Could have gone either way. Crowd is going wild right now, trying to urge on Majinovic. So far, Emery. Majinovic, big combination right now, Rock Sakurado. Majinovic slipping the shots right now. Showing good defense and power here in the tenth. She knows this fight's on the line. Sakurado trying to get a combination in here. Very exciting round. Good combination now by Majinovic. Sakurado hasn't really scored anything, Anne Marie. Seven. Getting tagged right now by Majinovic at the end, and a good finish, big finish tonight for Majinovic. Is it enough to win the title? Very, very close round. Unofficially, I've got the fight 95-95. Jill's got it the same way. We see this fight dead even in a draw. A lot of concern looks in both corners. Both fighters embracing now in the middle of the ring in what was a tremendous battle. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Judges really taking a lot of time right now tabulating their scores. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a decision. Judge Ron Hader scores it 96-94 for Ann Saccarato. Judge Usman Ali scores it 96-94 for Jel Jelena Mergenovic. And Judge Metcalf scores it 96-94 for the winner by split decision, Anne Marie Saccarato. Anne Marie Saccarato comes into the backyard of Jelena Majinovic and pulls a big upset here. It was probably just one of the most exciting fights I've ever seen in my life. Anne Marie, how did you feel? Oh my God, it was unbelievable. She's great competition. She threw a lot of good stuff at me. Uh, had good inside game and. Uh, she, she made me push for everything that I had inside. and She's a force to be reckoned with, so, uh, you know, I definitely give her props for overcoming everything, and, you know, I stepped up. I wanted to fight, and, uh, you know, we got we got to take steps and, and so in order to make fights and make women's boxing a reality. So, uh, you know, I definitely feel comfortable at 130, and you know what? She's tough. Let me tell you, at my hat is off to her. My hat is off to her, and this is the competition that the sport needs, you know, and hopefully this can be a step forward for the sport. It's about the sport. It's about building it up, building the respect for it, and we just need more fights like this out there. We look at the sport of boxing as the vehicle for us. It's a platform, as it were, to get a message across about women, about women's roles in society, about lesbians, about, I mean, there's so many things that we're kind of working on all at once. Boxing just happens to be the way we've chosen to do it because it's something that we're good at. I'm in that ring and it's me as the athlete, it's me as the female boxer, but it's me as also the gay lesbian that's out, the out athlete. And I take great pride in that. With that, I think there's a lot of responsibility. And, or at least I hold myself responsible to being able to display strength and confidence and having the ability to instill that in others through my performance in the ring and what people know of me outside of the ring. I'm Diana Nyad. For all of us here at In the Life, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next month. In the Life is funded in part by the H. Van and Maringen Foundation. Additional support provided by the Ford Foundation. 
and by the Lily Ochinkolas Foundation, and by the David Bonnet Foundation, and these funders, and by the annual support of In the Life members like you.